Hello guys and welcome to this video on decreasing and increasing by a percentage. Really good to see you. My name is Darren Masker and we are continuing our series on percentages. In the last video, did you watch it? We were looking at uh, finding a percentage of quantities and just finding a percentage. It was awesome. Uh, this one is going to take that a little bit further and maybe blow your mind with the idea that in fact percentages don't necessarily just have to be 100%. We can increase and decrease by percentages as well. Now the way we do that is freaking awesome because we look, look at the idea of something being 100% and then we look and say well hmm, if I've increased by 40% what have I got? If I decrease by 10%, what have I got? Lots of worked examples coming and really glad that you are here. If you haven't already done so, can you click the little doohickey in the corner there and subscribe? Never going to be rich, never going to be famous, but you know what? It just let me know you're watching and leave comments below at any point in the video if you're confused or stuck or in fact if you're enjoying or finding it useful. Greatly appreciated. Above is mathguru.com where all of these videos are found in textbook and sortable and downloadable notes for you to stick in your books. Couldn't be any more helpful if I tried. So, as I said, today's lesson is decreasing and increasing a percentage. First thing, what is a percentage? What is a percentage? If I tell you, you know, 60%, what on its own does it actually mean? I'm going to tell you pretty much nothing because it doesn't mean anything. I got 60% on a test. Okay, what was this test out of? We don't know. I just got 60%. What you've done in using percentages is allow you to compare it with your mate beside you. Ah, I got 60%, you got 59 loser. Yeah, but the point of it is, percentages on their own don't really mean anything. They're there to compare. The one thing that we do know, or we do like about maths, is the idea of 100%. Because that means we've got everything. Right? Generally, maths, we think of things as when we start with it, we have 100% of something. Now we can increase it or decrease it, and then maths gets a little bit more funky. But as I say here, you've got 25%, then you might have scored a quarter of the marks. 90% means maybe you had all of the marks to get an A. So I'm just going to recap in case you haven't actually worked out or, or sort of used what we've done before. Um, so what does percentages mean? Well, we can have percentages more than 100. So for example, 150%. So if we think of starting with 100%, how much more have we got? Congratulations. Well, to get to that, I would have to add 50% to give me 150%. And this line of working out here is going to be fairly critical to the rest of this video. Think about what percentage they're giving you. Look at the number 100, because that's what we normally have, means everything, and then try and work out how much bigger it is or how much smaller it is than 100%. So we can think of this then as it is 50% more than what I started with, right? So 50% more of what I started with, or believe it or not, 150%. If I, div if I turn that back into a decimal, how do I do that? I do 150 divided by 100, which gives me 1.5, or I've got 1.5 times what I started with, or it's one and a half times bigger. Now, how do I know it's bigger? Because 150% is bigger than 100%. What does 200% mean? And this is the language the questions are going to use to try and trick you. Because don't forget maths is nothing more than a big fat trick. Thanks, Barry. So 200%. So let's look at 200%. What do we start with normally? Well, we normally start with 100%. How do I get to 200%? I add another 100%. So that gives me the 200%. So what does it mean? Well, it now means because of the 100% we've added, I now have 100% more, right? I've got 100% more than I started with. But we also know that 200% is the same as 200 divided by 100, which is two, and otherwise known as two times bigger. So this 200% and two times bigger mean exactly the same thing. And that's the language we can start to use to apply to maths. Okay, increasing by a percentage. There are actually two methods of doing this. There is the easier way, there is the more funky mathematical quicker way. However you do it is totally up to you. I'm gonna show you both ways, and then for some of the questions, I'm gonna show you how to do it both ways for each question. But first things first, it says here, find the new value when $160 is increased by 40%. 
Okay, so these questions come from Cambridge. Thank you very much, Cambridge Essential Textbook, for allowing me to use all your examples. I honestly greatly, greatly appreciate it. So find the new value when it is increased by 40%. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is it's increased. So I want to, number one, oh, he says not writing in highlighter. First thing I want to do is find 40% of what I started with. So in this situation, $160, because it's increased. That $160 is increased by 40%. So I want to find 40% of $160. Ah, in my previous video, I showed you how to do that. Yep, so that becomes 40 divided by 100 times 160%. Divide by 100, yep, so that percent sign is divided by 100 of becomes times. Firing up my CAS calculator. I'm going to get it to do all the hard work for me. So there we go, 40 divided by 100, and I'm then going to multiply that by $160, which gives me $64. All right, so that is $64. Is that my answer? No, it isn't. This here is my increase. But the question quite clearly asks the new value. So it's going to say, well, what, what's my final price? What, what will actually happen when I increase that $160? Well, number two, you add the increase or decrease to the original value. And so we will then take $160, which is what I started with. I'm going to add on $64, and that's going to give me 200. Uh, let's just 160. We're going to add on 64, and that's going to give me $224. And there is my final answer. Now, one thing I want you to realize is, let's think about what we've done. We started with 100% of something. I've added on 40% of that value. And this value here is 140% of what I started with. That's going to come very useful in just a moment. Yeah, because this start amount, this value we started with, 100%. We made 40% bigger by adding on that 40%, which gave us 140%. And ladies and gentlemen, that's very much what I'm going to do here now. Because what I'm going to say is, right, let's reverse that a little bit. This $160 is 100%. But I'm increasing, which means I'm adding 40%. That gives me 140% of what I started with. 140% of what I started with. English, not my strong point. Do I care? No, I'm the maths guru. Let the English guru sort this one out. Okay, so 140% of what I start... Hold on a moment. Of. I know in mathematics what of becomes. I know what a percentage sign becomes with. And I know what I started with. So I can rewrite this now as 140% of $160. Should put the dollar sign in, really. Well, that's 140 divided by 100 times 160, because the, the percentage sign, if you remember, is divided by 100. Of is times, can I put this into my calculator? I should go, go. So there we go, so 140, we're gonna divide that by 100. We're gonna multiply that by 160, and out comes, hold on a moment, hold the phone, $224. Absolutely. Now, if we compare these two methods together, while they both got the same answer, how many calculations did you have to do in the first way? Two. How many calculations did you do in the second way? Just the one. Now, obviously, it's going to try and trick you. I personally much prefer this way of doing it. It just, to me, it's more elegant. Um, it goes straight to the answer without you making mistakes. But sometimes the questions will actually trick you and say, you know, find 140% and what was the increase? And you have to be very, very careful with those type of questions. Here's another example. Let's do it side by side. All right, so now I'm going to do a line down here and we're going to do each method side by side. Find the new value of $63 when it's increased by 20%. So the first method says find 20% of $63. And we know that's 20 divided by 100 times 63. Okay, so 20 divided by 100, and we're going to multiply that by 63, gives me 12.6. Now, because this is money, I have to be careful, that's $12.60. Remember, your calculator is a dumb piece of machinery. 
That's stage one. Now I have to add that on to my original value. So I've got 63, and I have to add on $12.60, and that's gonna give me, so add on 63, gives me $75.60. That was the first way. That's the way you have to do two calculations to remember what we're doing. The second way again, so we've got 63%, so we're starting with 100%, we're increasing by 20%. So I do 100 plus 20 is 120%, and then I want 120% of what I started with. Now what did I start with? $63. Now some people undoubtedly will email me or message me and go, yeah, but you've done two calculations there. Yes, I have for you guys on here to sort of uh, illustrate my point. To be honest with you, in my head, I wouldn't be doing, I wouldn't be writing this down, I'd, I'd work it out. 120%, oh, I can do that. That's divided by 100 times 63. Schluck this into my calculator. 120 divided by 100 times by 63 gives me 75.6, correct answer? Nope, dumb computer. Have to put two decimal places in my answer. And there we go. Now, there are real world examples to this, ladies and gentlemen, all right? And we will come back to all sorts of different ways of finding percentages later on. But find the cost of an $860 television that's been discounted by 25. Now, each of the examples we've done has basically been the same. Yeah, we've increased. Now we've got a decrease question. Let's do it both ways to see what happens. Number one then, we'll do method number one. So we've got $860. He says not being able to write that in any way, shape or form. So $860 and it's been discounted by 25%. Okay, so first things first, find 25% of $860. We can do that because that's 25 divided by 100 times 860, right? Okay, I can do this 25 uh, divided by 100 and we're gonna multiply that by 860 and we get $215. Now this is where sadly people go wrong with this method because we get so used to doing increases. We now do something stupid like, oh, I've got, so this is the second stage. I've got $860 and I'm gonna add on 215 and that's where it all goes horribly wrong. Why? The question doesn't want an add. The question's told you it's been discounted and discounted means it's gone down. So actually that plus is really a minus. So I'm gonna put a minus sign in here and now I do 860, I'm gonna minus that 215, which is gonna give me a final cost of my television of $645. Method one. Method two, same idea. So what do we start with? We start with 100%, we're discounting. So I'm going to, in this situation, do 100% minus 25%, which is gonna give me 75%. So after I've done my calculation, I'm gonna end up with 75% of what I started with. So we've got $860, and I want, let's try that one again, I want 75% of $860. Well, I can do that, 75 on 100 times 860 gives me 75, 100 times by 860 gives me the staggering value of $645. Straight to my answer, just by thinking about percentages. Last example, I think. Find the cost of a $250 microwave oven that has been marked up. And again, the language here is irritating because you. the hardest part here is you've got to try and work out whether it's marked up or marked down and what that actually means. Well, marked up means it's increased. So we've got 200, I'm just gonna do it that second one. I'm gonna do it my love way. So if, sorry if you want both methods for this one, um, but basically I know that I'm starting with 100%. It's being marked up by 12.5%. And so that means at the end, I'm gonna have 100 plus 12.5, which gives me 112.5% of what I started with. Oh, hold on a moment. 112.5% of what I started with $250. Well, I don't need to write the percent there. I'm just going to write divide by 100. Bang there in my calculator, 112.5. Now, obviously, in real life, we're not really allowed to have uh, decimals in fractions, but that's a different video, so we won't worry about that. 250, hit enter, and there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, my final answer, 281 and 25 cents. Love this stuff, and it comes up in mass all over the place. 
And as sad as it seems, there is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already done so, you can do me a favor and subscribe. Just let me know you're watching. Again, never going to be rich, never going to be famous. Leave a message below if you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful. If not, I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe. I'll see you soon.